uh, we are going to talk about something that happened earlier this week with the impeachment trial, specifically as it relates to, as always, local news takes priority here at, at Tactics, uh, Doug Jones, because he did, of course, vote in favor of conviction like every other Democrat, every single one. And with the exception of Mitt Romney, every single one voted to acquit, and Mitt Romney even voted to acquit on the second charge, the obstruction of Congress, which, as I've explained many times, is a bogus charge, but on both, both counts, both counts, Doug Jones voted to convict the President of the United States and remove him from office. This is a surprise to nobody. Not a single person within the sound of my voice should be surprised. I think that this is the reason that Doug Jones did this, because Doug Jones saw that poll just like you and I did. He knows that doing this hurts his chances at getting reelected. Here is why he opted to do it. But what really happened here is Doug Jones is hedging his bets. Because he knows, for a fact, it is already basically a predetermined conclusion he is going to lose this election. You can tell by the way that he hasn't really been hitting the campaign, uh, the campaign trail very hard. You can tell by he hasn't bought that many ads. I don't know that he's bought any ads within the state of Alabama. The vast majority of his advertising is through social media, and he does so for fundraising, and the vast majority of those ads are played outside the state of Alabama. Doug Jones, so far as I can tell, has absolutely zero intention of getting reelected. I mean, he'd like to get reelected, probably. He'd like to hold on to his Senate seat. But he knows that the odds of that are so astronomically minuscule that there's no reason really for him to put in a lot of effort to it. And the reason that he wouldn't vote uh, uh, to not convict Trump, to be the, the lone Democrat that voted to acquit the president, is he knows that, yeah, it's going to hurt his chances at re-election, but this is probably a choice between losing by, I don't know, maybe 10% and losing by 25%. Like, it's just that drastic. So, yeah, maybe he loses by a wider margin. Big deal. You still lost the seat. And I think he knows that. I think his political advisors know, know that. And I think what's actually going on here is that Doug Jones is bucking for a position, either with the National Democrat Party at the DNC or maybe a, a bigger position within the Democrat Party here in the state of Alabama. I think he's going, because of the way that he's been with the... Uh, the Democrat Party of Alabama and the way that they, there's a lot of people that are in power there that really don't like him. I think that he's going to be bucking for a job with the National uh, Democrat Party, the DNC, or maybe as a lobbyist or somebody in the media. Either way, he has a far, far better chance at landing a job like that if he votes to convict Trump than he does voting to acquit. And since he knows that he's probably going to lose the election anyway, and he's going to have to move on to something else afterward, and he has aspirations, I think, to do that after he's no longer a senator. I think he was hedging his bets and saying it's a much safer bet to vote to convict the president, and then voting to acquit the president isn't on my record when I have to explain that I am really loyal to the Democrat cause, and that's why I should be working with the DNC, because I feel like that would be an unforgivable sin to them. And so because of that, I think that that's the reason that was part of the calculation in Doug Jones choosing to vote to convict the president. Because I think he, like the rest of the country, knew there was no way Trump was going to get convicted, and so Doug Jones' vote didn't make a difference one way or the other, and he knew that. And so if that is the case and the end result is going to be the same, you have to ask, what is the X factor that makes him change his mind? I think that is a perfect explanation of why he would choose to vote to convict Trump when he's coming up for re-election very shortly. I think that that makes perfect sense. It explains everything else. It makes all of the pieces fall into place. But regardless of what his actual motivation is, we do have Doug Jones on camera on national TV explaining to everyone why he is voting to convict the president. And so I thought it only fair to let Doug Jones speak for himself and play him in his own words. Now, I am going to respond to this, of course, but I think it's fair to let Doug Jones at least tell you why he voted the way that he did. Here's his explanation. As I've said many times, I believe the American people deserve to see a completed puzzle, a picture with all of the pieces, pieces in the form of documents and witnesses with relevant firsthand information, which would have provided valuable context 
corroboration or contradiction to that which we have heard. But even with missing pieces, our common sense and life's experiences allow us to see the picture as it comes into full view. Now, to be fair to Senator Jones, this is one thing where even though I think we have different motivation for it, he and I are actually in agreement. I know, before you throw things at your computer screen and, and break your fancy new computer, stay with me here. <laughs> uh, there, there is a good reason. He and I have different motives, but arrive at the same conclusion. As I said on this program for weeks on end, it is in the Senate's best interest, it is in the Republicans' best interest, and I believe it is in Trump's best interest that witnesses be had, there is a real trial, and we put this thing to rest uh, for, for once and for all, and that there is no call of, oh, there was a cover-up, or they refused to hear witnesses. I think give the Democrats what they want, have a bipartisan exchange there, have them present their witnesses, us present theirs, because here's the thing. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid even in the least. When you have the facts on your side, when you, and here's the thing, even if it turns out we didn't have the facts on the side, let, let's say that the Democrat fantasy that they had been pushing all this time actually came true, and there was some kind of bombshell witness that said, oh yeah, President Trump was, uh, was totally soliciting the investigation in Ukraine specifically. He told me, he's like, look, we got to get this Joe Biden guy. I think that he might actually be able to get me. So, uh, he might be able to beat me in this election, so what you have to do is you have to dig up some dirt on him, and I want you to tell them that they are not getting that money until you've dug up some dirt on them. Well, yeah, that could have happened. I don't foresee it happening. I never thought that that was the case, but even if that had taken place, I'd say, hey, let the chips fall where they may. To me, that was the most important thing. I don't think that was going to happen. I do care about getting down to the truth, and I thought what was going to happen is that once we did, it was going to make the Democrats look even more ridiculous for holding the beliefs that they did and dragging this thing out and actually impeaching a sitting president on a basis of no evidence. So, on some level, Doug Jones and I are actually on the same page there. I do want a more complete picture. I do want to see all the pieces, including getting Hunter Biden on the stand to testify, including getting people like John Bolton on the stand to testify, including getting our ambassador, a, a myriad of other people, and get down to the bottom of what happened in Ukraine and actually explain what all happened, including the shady ties with the Bidens, with them, with the Chinese, everything. I want to get it all out in the open, all out in the sunlight. And if some Republicans get thumped, so be it. If some Democrats get thumped, so be it. That's what justice looks like. You don't care about the labels. You get down to the bottom of it. So on an ideological standpoint, Doug Jones and I are actually in the same part. Here's where Doug Jones goes wildly off the rails, though. He makes the case, and it's an incredibly stupid, self-contradictory case that the Democrats have been making for a couple weeks now when they're talking about the necessity of having witnesses, they'll say, okay, what we need is, like Doug Jones just said, we need more pieces. We don't have all the pieces. We don't have a complete picture. We need to piece this thing together so we know what to do. Also, even though we don't have all the pieces, let's convict him anyway. Okay, well, those two things cannot be true at the same time. Either you have enough pieces to make up your mind, you have enough pieces to say, yep, Trump did it. Let's convict him. Or, we don't know. We don't have enough pieces. Those two things cannot be true at the same time. You cannot say there is not enough evidence here, and we need witnesses, we need documents, we need to dig into this further, and simultaneously say, but we do have all we need to know that Trump was guilty. I I'm sorry, it simply doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way in any court of law. If you have enough evidence to convict, then the prosecution rests. There's no reason to go any further. There's no reason to dig any deeper. If you've already got the information you need, you run with it. The Democrats are trying to have their cake and eat it too, and Doug Jones is just an example of this. They're trying to say, no, we didn't have enough. There wasn't enough there. And also at the same time, but there was plenty to convict. See, that's because Doug Jones and the rest of the Democrats, their default was the president is guilty. He is guilty until proven innocent. 
until we can see evidence that says, nope, Trump didn't do it, which you can't prove a negative, that's a logical fallacy. Until we see evidence that says Trump didn't do it, this absolutely didn't happen, then we're going to vote to convict and remove him from office because we don't like the guy. See, Doug Jones, being a lawyer, should know better. He should look at this and say, you know what, it's terrible that we didn't get more witnesses, it's terrible that we didn't have all the pieces to the puzzle, it's terrible that the Republicans were keeping us from getting all the evidence, and in the lack of all that evidence, I have to vote to acquit, because I don't have all the information that I need to make a decision. That's how it works in a court of law. If you had some kind of inability to find evidence, if you get, uh, if your verdict is not guilty, you can be it can be decided that you are not guilty because of a lack of evidence. Because in the court system, in America, the way that it is supposed to work is that you are innocent until they can prove that you are guilty. This was the opposite. Doug Jones made it up in his mind already. The president is already guilty. Mm, there's not enough evidence there? Okay, well, I'm just going to go with my default. It shows that he jettisoned every single legal standard that a lawyer should understand in order to push a political agenda. And it's shameful that Doug Jones, somebody that actually has studied the law, should know this and completely ignored it. So here's the next clip. Throughout the trial, one piece of evidence continued to stand out for me. It was the president's statement that under the Constitution, we have Article 2, and I can do anything I want. That seems to capture this president's belief about the presidency, that he has unbridled power, unchecked by Congress or the judiciary or anyone else. That view, dangerous as it is, explains the president's actions toward Ukraine and Congress. Now, here Doug Jones is absolutely stretching for anything that he can do to justify why he just threw out every single legal principle he's supposed to stand for to convict a president that he says there's not enough evidence on. And what he does, the, the vehicle that he chooses to do that, is that Trump has said before, well, I have Article 2 under the Constitution, which means I can do whatever I want. This point has three major flaws. The first flaw is that when Donald Trump said that, and he did say it multiple times on national TV, on record, there's recordings of him, but every single time he said it, every single one, what he was talking about was Robert Mueller. What he was saying when people asked him about whether or not he was going to fire Robert Mueller, he said, no, I'm not going to fire him, but under Article 2 of the Constitution, if I did fire him, I would be well within my right as the president to do that. I can do whatever I want when it comes to the special counsel. He is correct. The special counsel is an extension of the executive branch. And so everything that Trump is saying within the context of that is correct. But that had nothing to do with Ukraine. Nothing. So the piece of evidence, as Doug Jones calls it, that kept sticking out to him is... Donald Trump commenting on an unrelated matter long before the Ukraine call even happened. Not just before news of the Ukraine call came out, literally before the Ukraine call took place. What he was saying had nothing to do with this. The second flaw is that Trump was sp speaking specifically about Article 2 powers over the special counsel. So this is why that argument bears no weight in this particular discussion. You cannot take something that somebody said completely out of context and assume that they were applying it to something that they were not applying it to. That would be almost like if somebody had accused me of, I don't know, bribery or extortion or embezzlement when it comes to News Radio 1440. Let's say that that were the case, that somebody was accusing me of embezzling money from News Radio 1440 and their evidence to show that I was capable of doing that, that I had thought about doing that before, is they took a recording of me when I had my producer. Let's say it was back when I had one of my producers, and they said, I wish you wouldn't pick that, um, that song to come back from a commercial break. And I'd say, hey, it's my show. I can do what I want. Oh, see, that's him on the air saying that Caleb thinks he can do whatever he wants. Well, yeah, in regards to the show, in regards to picking my own bumper music, I'm saying that. That's not the same thing as saying 
that I can do whatever I want and therefore I can embezzle. You're applying something that I said completely out of context to a subject matter that is in no way connected to what we were talking about here. And Doug Jones knows that he is intentionally taking the president's words out of context to try to make him look bad. But that's not what President Trump said at all. That wasn't even pertaining to that topic. And the third reason that his argument here makes absolutely no sense is talking about doing something and then actually doing it are two completely different things. And in this case, it wasn't even specific. So to go back to my um, embezzlement example, that would be like saying, oh, well, what Caleb said there about he can do what he wants means that he would embezzle. Well, I wasn't talking specifically about embezzling. Now, if you had a clip of me saying, hey, I should be able to embezzle because I can do what I want, okay, maybe you have a point. That at the very least shows that I had thought about it at one point, but that's not what even's going on here. Even if it was, though, there's a difference in saying you would be capable of doing something or that you think you have permission to do something and then actually doing it. You would still, to convict the president, need evidence that he actually did the thing, not just that he talked about it. And so, again, Doug Jones is a lawyer and should understand all of these things, and yet he intentionally misunderstands the president, rips his quotes out of context to try to make the man look bad. Let's look at the third and final clip in this little speech by Senator Jones. The sum of what we've seen and heard is unfortunately a picture of a president who has abused the great power of his office for personal gain. A picture of a president who has placed his personal interest well above the interest of the nation and in so doing threatened our national security, the security of our European allies, and the security of Ukraine. The evidence clearly proves that the president used the weight of his office and the weight of the United States government to seek to coerce a foreign government to interfere in our election for his personal political benefit. His actions were more than simply inappropriate. They were an abuse of power. Sadly, President Trump left his post with regard to the withholding of military aid to Ukraine and a White House visit for the new Ukrainian president. And in so doing, he took the great powers of the office of the president of the United States with him. Impeachment is the only check on such presidential wrongdoing. Now, what Doug Jones is saying here could not be further from the truth. The evidence is not clear. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you that the evidence is absolutely crystal clear. Because it's not. Because a lot of people on the right will tell you that the evidence is clear that the president did nothing wrong. Or, or the, at the very least that the president's motives were not what the Democrats claim his motives were, which is, of course, to get one up on a political opponent. The evidence is not clear on that. It's possible that in the back of Trump's mind he was thinking, okay, I've got to root out this corruption, and if it winds up smacking Joe Biden and, and keeping him from looking good on the national stage because he might be the guy I'm running against, well, that's a plus. I don't know, maybe the president was thinking about that. It doesn't matter. Because as long as he was acting in the national interest, it doesn't matter if he had an ulterior motive. As long as he was acting within his capacity as the president and doing so in a way that served the national interest, in other words, doing his job as president, to look into things like this as America's top law enforcement official, the person that's supposed to be looking into these matters, as long as he was doing that within that purview then even if he did have bad motives, still not illegal. The only way you could prove that what he was doing was wrong is if you did have a soundbite of the president saying that the reason he was doing it was because he was trying to get a leg up on the election and you had to prove that Trump knew. Not that it was true, just that Trump knew that it wasn't going to be something in the national interest. If you could somehow prove that, then yeah, you might have a case, but none of that is true. The evidence is anything but clear. It's incredibly murky. And because of that, because there is an absence of crystal clear evidence, well, then you have to let the guy go. You have to say that there is not sufficient evidence to convict somebody in this case. That would be true of a, a lowly petty crime or the President of the United States. Everybody should be equal under that standard of innocent until proven guilty. 
And another thing that is makes it so murky as to whether or not that was actually the president's motive is even the witnesses that were called in the House, every single one of them that said that they believe the president was doing this as a way to get one up on Joe Biden, one up on a political opponent for the upcoming election, every single one admitted in their testimony that that was how they perceived it. It was conjecture. It was speculation. Not a single one could provide an example of President Trump telling them directly that this is my motive, this is my reason for doing this. I'm not saying there aren't things in that testimony that make the president look bad. I'm not saying that there aren't things in that testimony that could lead you to believe that that was Trump's motivation for it. But whether or not it could lead you to that belief, there's a difference in doing that and proving it which should be the standard when you're talking about something as serious as impeachment. Look, Jones and his followers, they can talk all they want about him being a moderate, but what you just saw in real time is Senator Doug Jones throwing everything that he knows, everything that he claims to hold dear about the law, threw all that out the window to fall in line and walk lockstep with Chuck Schumer and the Democrat Party. The guy is the epitome of partisanship. And anybody that tries to tell you differently is simply not paying attention. Just in case you were wondering, yes, I am a straight white Christian male and a small government constitutionalist which means I have no chance of getting any help from the government and wouldn't accept their help even if they offered. Which means I'm going to need you to like and subscribe because my gun collection is not going to pay for itself.